I just read Paolo Coelho's The Alchemist as well. It was like the first book I'd read in probably a decade. Mm -hmm. So I was in this weird, I had this weird out-of-body experience for a good chunk of that time where all of these things were going on and there were storylines or whatever. And all I was thinking about was this guy, if anyone's not read The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, there's this shepherd boy going on a journey of self-discovery trying to find out who he is and that really really spoke to me at the time and i was in the south coast of majorca which is spain oh, yeah. and it was in the middle of summer and i was i read this book during the media lockdown week and then went in in this total fucking fever dream so my experience of love island i don't think is perfectly representative some of the things that i did realize were that it teaches young people that love is a game to be played mm -hmm. that Loyalty is both super important and also unbelievably disposable mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Think about when Love Island comes on TV in the UK. I'm team such and such, yeah. right? Like Hardier yeah. or whatever, <laughs> Tris, whatever they way that they, they, they try and do that thing. I'm team this. And then as soon as one person decides they're going to move on, Typically, if it's a guy, he's being totally unfair. Mm -hmm. If it's a girl, maybe that dude was a bummer. If he was cute or sweet, then that was her fault and she shouldn't have done it. It's so, it, it encourages people to make very quick decisions, to fall very hard, very fast, to have loyalty, but only have loyalty to someone who's likable. A lot of people, are, unlikable yeah. people deserve relationships yeah. too. You know what I mean? It's, everybody needs somebody. Yeah. It really does. It's like popularity contest even in that. Absolutely. Oh. Of course, because your status... Real, do you get real emotions, like real jealousy and real anger? Or... I didn't have a single romantic emotion during Love Island, okay. but I had a lot of bromance. No romance, but right. a lot of bromance okay. right while I was in there. I cried when I left because I was missing my boys. Oh. I didn't want to leave my boys behind. Yeah. And I'd had this really intense emotional experience. I'd spent a lot of time. I'd really connected with guys while oh. I was there, but... I, I, the girls were perfectly pleasant, but I wasn't bothered about but leaving them behind. Did that affect your self-esteem in any way? That it wasn't connecting with the girls, or not really? Did you just find not particularly? I just people? wasn't. I really was not attracted to any of them. Uh, we kept on saying when the girls were coming in, everybody had a type, mm -hmm. right? And I, I, I don't think that they'd read necessarily all of the guys' sheets, and <laughs> yeah. you can see that in the fact that there isn't a single relationship from that season. Wow, that's still not together. one. No one. When is the last time than anybody else? So. Married at First Sight. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this story? I, 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 I'm familiar with it. So for the people that don't know, the transgender bride set to take Married at First Sight UK by storm transitioned age 21 at an NHS hospital before spending £50,000 on cosmetic surgery to be taken seriously as a woman. Mail Online can reveal today. Channel 4 viewers will see Ella Morgan, 29, who was born Evan Morgan, head a male contestant amid a row over whether the groom was told first or not. Ms. Morgan is shown in the trailer for Married at First Sight, telling her new husband her big secret after they married, having admitted her transition has made her fear rejection after being treated as a dirty secret in the past. However, Channel 4 has now revealed that they did tell the man in advance he would be marrying a trans woman. It is understood that the man is furious with how the broadcaster treated him during the show and afterward. But the beauty and fashion consultant from Bristol says she is determined to be the star of the show to shed light on the struggles and realities of being trans, adding, we're not freaks or mentally ill, I'm still just like any other girl. It's going to be difficult for you to comment on this one, Sadia. It is going to be difficult. I'm trying to see how I can behave and not offend. But here, here's the reality of it. Even if I was born a woman or whatever, and I had millions of cosmetics procedures, and I have a higher risk of oppression because of the you know, lifestyle I've chosen, a man has every right to know that. and has every right to say it's not for me. I wouldn't be with a, somebody who was born a woman because it's just not for me. I'm a heterosexual woman, and I'm entitled to identify as that. Now, uh, what I find, the thing is, if it's really painful to be transgender and it's a lot of suffering, I don't think it's good for TV to capitalize on that for views and try and use that as somebody suffering as a form of views. But I also say that it does it does make you different from other women. If you're saying the trans struggle, it was really hard for you in your childhood and you found it really depressing, that makes you different to the woman that grew up in the body she identifies with. So to say that you're on par with the typical woman is not true because you've gone through a different type of trauma that we haven't. So essentially, you're never going to be like a woman, not even just physically, but also psychologically. You're never going to be like a woman. And it's okay to never be like a woman. It's okay. Uh, the thing that I find difficult to understand about the whole trans debate is one, for many decades, we were told gender is a social construct. It's just this imaginary thing that we're telling we've people. Been, we've only 
only been told that for about one decade. We've been told it's a, a social contract. Everybody's saying it's a social contract. The liberals are saying it's a social contract. But then if you say that you identify as the opposite gender, they give you biological treatment. Now, if it's a social construct, essentially you're only identifying as a social construct. You don't need to change your biology. It doesn't make any sense. It's like saying that your uh, football team who you support is a social construct. I don't need to change my biology to be a Man United supporter because essentially it's a social construct. So if gender is a social construct, why do we need to transition? I think the the argument on the other side of the fence would be I want my outer appearance to reflect my inner experience. Then why not change your inner experience rather than your outer? I don't know whether they have control of that. But that's no different to, uh, for example, an anorexic will genuinely believe that they are the fattest person in the world. They identify as fat. Now, the reality is I'm not going to give them a liposuction so that their brain and their body are aligned. I have to look at the psychological defect that caused them to be uh, unaligned and focus on the psychology first. And if that doesn't work, then we can look at biological procedures. But the reality is I don't see how when we comes to anorexic i get that there's you know it's not healthy or whatever it is but at the same time we know the suicide rates and transgenders is not healthy either we're doing them a disservice by simply giving them a shortcut to biological procedures while skipping psychological interventions i had a uh, hannah barnes on the show she did a big investigation into gids the gender identity something service that was at the tavistock clinic mm. in the uk that's recently been shut down and then we started again and then the restock i think had some controversy as well and uh, there is an unbelievably high percentage of autism and ocd and other sort of co-psychopathology type things mm. in the trans community and there is this big question that she asked which was are people mentally disturbed because they're trans or are they trans because they're mentally disturbed mm -hmm. and there is a a question to be asked that if treated autism or OT ocd or something like that mm -hmm. if that ended up getting treated whether the gender dysphoria downstream from that would dissipate well, and that's a i think that would encounter in some of the real hardline trans communities i think that would encounter some challenges because they would say that almost by getting rid of the autism you're denying the personhood of the trans person mm -hmm. because it delegitimizes the gender dysphoria and almost makes it how oh, the light bulbs in here give off light but also heat it's mm -hmm. like oh the gender dysphoria was a side effect of autism yeah. and we don't know we don't know the direction of, of causality here but it's one of the most um, heavily contested, um, highly hot topics. Would you be sized as a man that chooses not to be with a transgender woman in America? Depends what you're talking about. This discussion of are you allowed to have your own preferences mm -hmm. is fascinating, mm -hmm. right? If you prefer blondes, mm -hmm. is that somehow prejudiced against brunettes and gingers? Yeah. If you prefer tall girls, mm -hmm. is that somehow prejudiced against petite girls? The line between... Question of prejudice. are you being either transphobic or homophobic by not dating somebody who is biologically the same sex as you but has transitioned? Mm -hmm. it, it, it seems like a slippery slope from there to just why shouldn't you date somebody that self IDs as yeah. that? You don't need to do the external comparison. Do you know Blair White? You familiar with yeah. her? Yeah, so Blair's a good friend. Mm -hmm. She looks more like a girl than a lot of yeah. girls do, <laughs> yeah. right? But I don't know I, if she was to get into a relationship with somebody and not open up about. Well, she hasn't had bottom surgery, so it's a, a surprise that's waiting to visit you at some point. It's a fascinating discussion. I do think that the not dating transitioned people is transphobic argument has come and gone. Mm -hmm. Anybody that genuinely looks at that and says, you should date how we tell you to date is it's again does that mean that i have to date everybody yeah. why do i not have to be attracted to my video guy <laughs> like, do you know what i mean yeah. i'm supposed to have i'm allowed to have preferences yeah. and it becomes kind of self-defeating did, did, did you ever hear about the study with dr money and the twins so there was two twins that went to hospital to get circumcised but they accidentally burnt the penis off one so what the doctors decided to do is raise the child they were both boys but raise a child that had his penis burnt off as a woman as a girl so for the first seven years of life they just put her in dresses, made her believe that she was a girl. Everything was like, you're just a girl. But as the girl hit puberty, got more and more like a boy. And she, she remembering being suicidal, saying, I want to be a boy. I feel like a boy. I want to play with the balls and I want to play sports. And so eventually they told him the truth and he went back to being a boy because he just the self-discovery of your hormones. But eventually he ended up committing suicide because of the trauma.